Nikola Jokic is having the greatest offensive season of any big man ever, and it's not close. He's averaging 26.7 points and 8.6 assists per game on 57% from the field, 39% from three, and 85% from the line, and is doing things on a night-to-night -night basis that I'm not sure should be legal. But to make the case for this season being the greatest offensively of any big man ever, first we have to understand what makes Jokic, particularly this year, just that special. Maybe the most notable shift in Jokic's game this year has been his consistent uptick in aggression as a scorer. He's always been an elite scorer when he wants to be. Just look at his career playoff averages of 24.7 points per game on 51-42-84 splits for proof of that. But whereas in years past he's been content to sit back and relax throughout the regular season, this year, largely out of necessity, he understands the need to maximize his value as a scorer each and every night. It's why he started the season with 20 straight scoring nights of 15 plus points, because he knows that he can't stand to do any less. But his improvement goes beyond that, most notably with his growth as a jump shooter. Jokic has always had arguably the best touch in basketball. His Sombor shuffle is a patently ridiculous move, and his tip-ins, floaters, and general contested shot making have always been otherworldly. But this year he's taken it up a notch. Jokic is shooting 53% for mid-range this season as opposed to under 46% last year and just 40% two years ago. His variety of post moves from the Sombor shuffle to a lethal face-up game are unstoppable. His mid-range game off the catch is deadly because his high arcing shot, released from a high vantage point, is impossible to affect. The deadliness is extended beyond the arc as well, where Jokic is shooting over 39% from deep as opposed to around 31% over the past couple seasons. Whereas in previous years, some teams chose to just let Jokic shoot and try to kill them that way, that's no longer an option. Which just opens up more options for deadly Jokic offense. He may not have a blazing first step, but he can sure sell a pump fake, and if he gets into the lane, he has a ridiculous floater, which he's hitting 52% of this season. Of course, taking a defender out of the play and forcing rotations also opens up a world of playmaking opportunities for Jokic, who always has his head on a swivel in those situations. Then, of course, there's just the brute dominance of a 280-pound man who can move basically any defender wherever he wants to. Jokic's aggression and physicality down low are basically unstoppable, and he's shooting a ridiculous 77% at the rim this year. And he's also attempting a comfortable career-high 5.4 free throws a night. Even if you're somewhat hard to move, he doesn't need much to get off his hook shot, which he's hit 62% of this season. His footwork and pump fake artistry is freakish down there as well, so even if you hold strong and you think you have him beat, he'll probably figure out a way to score on you anyways. He's also far and away the best tip-in scorer in basketball with his incredible touch down there, his nose for the ball, and crazy quick second jump, basically because he doesn't get far off the ground in the first place. All of this makes him truly unstoppable as a scorer, especially because as his game is so dependent on skill and he's so incredible at making difficult shots, it doesn't matter who's guarding him. Look at what he's done to Rudy Gobert this year, in my opinion, certainly the best defender in basketball. In two meetings this season, the Serb is averaging 41 points per game on 63% shooting against the Stifle Tower. He's largely unaffected by length or physicality because the shots he's taking would be tough for mere mortals anyways, and he's just used to it. And of course, that same skill set and variety as a scorer makes Jokic a killer in the clutch. He's currently 4th in the league in clutch points per game on 50% shooting, and his 4.8 clutch points per night would A, lead the league most seasons, and B, are far and away the most by any big man since the stat began being tracked in 96-97, about 20% higher than anyone else in that time. Whereas other big men have historically shrunk in those moments, unable to create their own shots, Jokic excels at a historic level. So you double this guy, right? You double the hell out of him. Every time. No, of course not, because he's the best passer in basketball. There's a case to be made for Luka's ridiculous vision and lob throwing, and LeBron's ability to vary pace and make just about every pass in the book, but Jokic's creativity and willingness as a passer is what sets him apart. He incentivizes people to play basketball the right way. Why is Gary Harris in the 99th percentile as a cutter this year? Why was Will Barton in the 98th percentile as a cutter last year? All the credit to those guys, but people play that way because they know they get rewarded. Jokic make literally every pass in the book. Wraparounds, touch passes, full court water polo passes, stuff that you never see anywhere else. But just as importantly, he sees everything before it happens, and he wants to get the ball to other people above anything else. Send a double his way, and he's made the right pass the moment the rotation starts. Lag behind for a second off an inbound, and he throws a touchdown pass. Start to cut, and he puts the ball right on the money. Whereas Luke and LeBron will hammer the ball out of the pick and roll to generate their assists, Jokic creates out of the flow of the offense, which I think is even more valuable. Regardless, it allows him to be the kind of offensive engine we've never seen at the big man position. 
The Nuggets are a top five offense in basketball by offensive rating with what I think could be described as solid to pretty good talent. His second leading man is an incredibly hot and cold Jamal Murray, averaging a pretty inefficient 18 points per game this year. But there's a reason the offense feels like it runs almost as smoothly with Monte Morris in as it does with Murray. Give Jokic a dude who can handle and knock down a mid-range jumper, a few shooters and willing cutters, and you've got one of the best offenses in basketball. No center in history has ever been able to say that. So now we're into that part of the conversation. Jokic is great, but is he really having the best offensive season of any big man ever? Yes, he certainly is. Take your pick of any season from the sport's greatest big men in history, and we can compare it to Jokic in this year. Let's start with Wilt's 50-point-per-game season in 61-62. Now, Wilt did this in the fastest era in basketball. His Philadelphia Warriors played 131 possessions per game, and he played just about every single one of them. Bring his stats down to per 75 possessions, so they're much more comparable to what players play in the modern NBA, and they pale in comparison to Jokic's. Wilt, with one of the great scores of the era and a 10-time All-Star in Paul Erickson, with the offensively versatile Hall of Famer Tom Gola and one of the great playmakers of the era and another Hall of Famer Guy Rogers, led the Warriors to be a very modest fourth of nine teams in offensive rating. Basically average. Why? Wilt didn't make guys better. So his scoring numbers were almost identical to Jokic's. He's averaging 7.5 assists less, and he was considerably less efficient, not to mention he had an actual fatal flaw in his free throw shooting, whereas Jokic can kill you from anywhere on the court and can be an elite closer because of it. So what's his case here? If you take out the power of legend and awe-striking raw numbers provided without context, there isn't one. But let's throw up the rest of the contenders up there, all the best centers in NBA history and their best offensive seasons. It's hard to find one of those guys to take as a scorer over Jokic, especially given his unrivaled versatility and floor spacing that inherently makes modern big men more valuable. But far and away his greatest advantage is that while those guys needed other great players for elite team offense, Jokic does not. He's a LeBron, a Luka, a peak Magic Johnson. He just happens to be doing it as a big man. And that's just more valuable than any dominant one-on-one -on -one scorer who doesn't also make the people around him better. When people call him Dirk with all-time passing, they really aren't kidding at this point. In my eyes, nobody touches him, and if the Nuggets can grab a top-four seed, he should be the runaway MVP favorite. He's doing things that have never been done in the history of basketball, and we all need to acknowledge that just a little bit more. To everybody who made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. If you want more content like this, and particularly more Nikola Jokic talk, go ahead and check out my podcast, Nerd Sesh. I do it with my buddy Logan Camden. This is our collective account here, and you can see a bunch of clips from our show, but we do three a week. We do sports history on Monday, and right now we're doing two NBA shows on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So if you want more content like this, I will put the link to our podcast in the description. But other than that, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed.